Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon already. Right, we just uh, went to lunch. So uh, thanks everybody being here. We're really excited to launch this new podcast series. We're calling it the Career of the Week podcast series. And what we're looking to do is put a spotlight on high demand careers, both in our economy, but also as we know um, that teenagers want to know more about. So this series uh, every week, uh, it'll be featured on our new Career Snapshots website, which is part of the Prosperity by Design movement. And that's a movement to try to help more of America's youth find the pathways of education, training, and skills that can lead them to prosperity and happiness and doing it in a more intentional manner. And by allowing, hopefully, uh, professionals, successful young professionals to be able to share wisdom uh, on the podcast, but also we want to include a student voice on here. So not only are we really excited about having a, a successful young professional with us, but also a student who is interested in the same uh, career sector, the same kind of profession, who can ask the questions of the professionals who will be on this uh, program. So everything we do with Prosperity by Design, uh, my, I'm married with kids and they'll tell you I'm not that bright, but we're, we're here to really mimic and do what they do at the Stanford Life Design Lab for the last 15 years in trying to help more Americans um, go down a pathway uh, to listen and get uh, about their curiosities and talk to people involved in their areas of curiosity and move them in that direction so they can get down pathways that hopefully lead them to prosperity and happiness and help them avoid maybe some potholes that can be in the road that are being, uh, um, and, and you know, I guess a lot of Americans are challenged some ways with some of the problems they're in. So today we're privileged and honored to have Miss Carly Morris with us, um, as well as student Ashley Heron with us. And so Ashley's gonna work with me in asking some of the questions today. And so we're gonna put Carly on the hot seat. So Carly, can you start by telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do and who you do it for? Sure, thanks for having me, first of all. I feel honored. Um, my name is Carly Morris. I am a project manager for Rogers Builders, a company owned locally, a uh, women-owned company here in Charlotte. Um, we build all types of building, education, healthcare, office space, commercial, um, primarily in the Charlotte region. Um, we're, we're also North Carolina, South Carolina region, but it's pretty much a regional company here. Um, locally, um, we are a construction manager. So we build uh, different buildings. My personal product right now is, you can kind of see it behind me, um, as my background, it's the new West Charlotte High School, um, which is I think really neat and kind of unique to uh, CMS anyway, right? Because and even to this podcast, because it's a it's a school within the same school system. So um, it's been a really neat project. We're a year into it. We have two years to go. Um, one year till we turn this building over, and then another year to um, demo the other buildings, add some sports fields and things like that. So we'll we will finish summer of 2023. Um, and I, I guess I said I was a project manager. There are different roles um, that we have in our company. Um, I can speak a little bit to both kind of routes that anyone would be interested in, but um, you know, construction looks really different depending on the size company you're with, what you're building. Um, but I can, I can speak to kind of my, uh, my route that I took um, and also maybe some other uh, little arms off of the same route that, I'm, that I've taken so far. So talk about your route. Okay, sure. Um, so early, early on, um, I actually started, uh, what piqued my interest in construction is I went on my first mission trip to Mobile, Alabama. And we essentially just did house repairs. I didn't even know how to swing a hammer. 
Um, but my crew leader took the time to teach me how to swing a hammer. And by the end of it, you know, I, I was, I was rolling. And I, that is where I think my first, uh, passion for construction came from. It's in my family. My grandfather was a brick Mason. My uncles are in construction. My father is so like, it's, it's in, in the family, if you will. But, um, it was really that, um, external experience that really got me interested in it. So I am, uh, you didn't mention it before, but I am a former student from Olympic. Um, and, uh, there were construction classes offered. I, I vividly remember the day I was at Southwest Middle School and we were picking our first classes for high school. And I was so excited to pick architecture and construction and anything I could just like jump and dive into. So I had my um, first construction class as a freshman and took a construction class or and or architecture class or engineering class every single year that I was in high school. Um, in part of that program, we started the, the Habitat House build on a temporary foundation. I was part of the very first build ever done uh, for Olympic. And um, there was some um, companies located here in Charlotte that donated time and materials and finances um, to help make that Habitat House happen. And then at the end of the school year, at the end of the year, and Mike, you were really um, instrumental in this too. Um, that company offered me and another student a full-time paid internship the summer between senior year and freshman year. Um, and that really, I think, started my career, that right there. Um, I went to Appalachian State for construction management and did, had a minor in business. Um, I think sometimes I use my minor in business more than my major in construction. Um, but every summer I went back and I worked for the same company. Um, so I started with, you know, some smaller uh, projects or additions to schools, actually. South Mech High School um, and Idlewild Elementary School um, and worked under a project manager who was super influential to me. Her name is Kate. Um, still keep in contact with her. And so I worked for her two summers. And then the third summer, I went and uh, helped a team on the CMC Pine Bowl project. Um, there's a bed tower there. There's actually a new bed tower uh, going up. Um, Rogers is actually building it. So it's, it's kind of a neat uh, how it all comes around full circle. Um, and after I graduated from college, uh, that company hired me full time. And I've worked for... Um, three local companies uh, since I graduated college and have had experience mostly in healthcare, but I've gotten to be part of some really uh, interesting and neat projects like a vertical expansion. So we were building over top an existing building while it was occupied. Um, I've worked inside of hospitals. I've done brand new, um, the VA healthcare center over off of uh, Tyvola and Billy Graham. Uh, that was a standalone facility. Um, so each project, I think, has its unique piece to it, whether it's a $500,000 uh, imaging uh, renovation or if it's a brand new replacement high school. Each of them have their own unique things. And uh, I've probably taken a lot from each of those projects that I've learned just in different aspects of my life. Great. Can you talk? Can you elaborate a little bit? You touched upon some key components in there. And so you start, you know, you went to high school and, mm -hmm. you know, you started taking, you were part of the NAF Career Academy model that Olympic does, what high school does with regards to kids um, going through a career academy experience in high school. And it focuses just not on college readiness, it focuses on that you should be both career and college ready, not being exclusive one to the other to help you find what you like, what you're interested in, where, as you know, a lot of students come to high school and it's just driven on college readiness and all AP and, you know, things that probably pressures that kids have as well. Can, can you talk a little bit about the role 
that being taking career technical education classes that helped you get your career NAF Career Academy diploma and how that helped you um, hopefully with regards to where you're at today and finding what you like and curious and interested about? Yeah, so uh, that same individual that was uh, my friend that was offered the, the other internship, he took a little bit of a different route. And so it was interesting to see the two of us going through the same program um, could, you know, you could go straight into working uh, with a company or you could do the internship or more, I guess, traditional. Um, so, so especially with construction, I feel like it's such a unique industry that um, almost anything goes. So if, if college is not for you, that's okay. Um, you don't necessarily have to, to take that route. So the, the skills that you learn in those classes are what I use today. Um, and I think that it's important that, um, I, I didn't love all of the subjects in school, but what made it interesting and fun was being able to tie different classes in with, with my construction classes or my architecture classes and being able to, to tie both of those in there. So um, that's a really good point that you don't, you don't have to take the traditional route and um, you know, whether you wanna go jump straight into your career or the other one, either one is fine. So there's more than one pathway to success and happiness and prosperity. It's not one size fit, fits all and required for that. Absolutely. Hey, Ashley. Ashley, yeah. well, uh, why don't you go ahead and ask uh, Carly some questions you have as a, a young student in yeah. with similar interests. So one of the first questions that I probably would have um, is, did you ever get certified for project management? I did not. Um, not like a specific certification um, of any sort. Obviously my degree is in construction management, but um, I did not get a specific certification for it. Thank you. And um, what different jobs and what kind of companies have you worked for and what were some pros and cons of each of them that you've seen? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I didn't really, I have told you what my role is now as project manager, but I obviously didn't start as a project uh, manager. Um, so with most construction companies, again, depending on their size, you'll start out either as a field engineer, an office engineer, or a project engineer. Everyone has a little bit different name with it, um, but it's, it's kind of you um, are set out on, when you first start out, you don't really know if you want to be more of the, uh, I hate calling it off the side and field side, but because it sounds like you're on two different sides, but there's really um, two different tracks. So you have your project management, role on the project. Um, I'm responsible for contracts, schedule, making sure the material is on the job site at the right time so that uh, my field superintendents can get the work into place. And so then that's the, kind of the second role um, on like my project team um, that we all work together. They are responsible for getting the work in place, but they can't do it without me and I can't do it without them. Um, so when you start off in a uh, project or office or field engineer role, it's really trying to decide like what aspects of the project do you want to be part of? Do you want to be mainly um, out there building the work or do you want to make sure you have all of the stuff and uh, get all of the things in line so that the project can be successful as well? Um, and so when you first start off in that role, you're kind of exploring and touching different aspects of the project to, to make that decision. So you don't have to make it immediately. Um, and then I'm trying to think of everything that you asked me. Did I answer all of your questions? There was a few more. Um, Maybe I didn't. Yeah, you're good. You, you answered for the most what I wanted to know. Um, okay. What, when you were trying to decide what kind of route to go, what did you decide to go more behind the planning everything? So what's really funny is when I first started my internship, when I was 18, I went in because I'd had, you know, four, uh, I'd been interested in it for four, five, six years. I went in thinking I knew everything that there needed to, you needed to know about construction, maybe just needed to find stuff. And, and I found out very quickly, the commercial construction world is very different than the residential. And so, um, 
you know, I, I never even knew there was a difference, honestly. Um, and I didn't even know that this role really existed from a commercial construction standpoint. Most of the time I tell people my role, because a lot of people think that I'm an architect, that I draw the building. Um, and I don't, I actually take the set from the architect and we put it into place. So the way I describe it a lot of times is um, how you have a general contractor who builds a house, right? They take the plans and they put it into place. I do that same thing, but on a, just a little bit larger scale. Um, but ultimately it's very similar. And I learned so much through my internships and my hands-on training, um, through my internships that, um, that is, is invaluable. Um, so that is, I started out in that role and I just decided that I really like the project management side because I like coordination. I like planning. I like, um, trying to put things into place. And then ultimately I, you know, it's, it's my responsibility as a project manager to bring our team together and make sure our team health is, is good and that we're working together really well and that our subcontractors have what they need and everyone's kind of um, just doing what they need to do, but uh, just need a little bit of coordination and, and that's kind of what drew me to the project manager side. When you first went into, um, into the internship, did you know, um, did you think that you wanted to go into more residential? at first realized that you liked commercial I actually honestly didn't realize there was that big of a difference um mm -hmm. and yes I, I think it was, and so that's what I went in with the mindset and I realized how much I loved the um I don't want to say the bigger projects because I feel like I'm diminishing residential not at all but just the coordination and the in the size and the things that um, I was involved in, it was a whole new world I didn't even know existed. And so through that internship, I was able to figure out really what I liked and what direction I wanted to go without, um, you know, you know, going too far down a road and, or down a path and deciding, oh, maybe this isn't for me. You know, I've, I've invested X amount of dollars or time or career into something and then suddenly realized I don't really love it that much. Um, so I highly, highly suggest internships if you can get them paid or unpaid um, in any sort of aspect. So if you're interested in construction and you can't find an internship in construction or experience in construction, go work for an architect, go find, you know, a subcontractor that could work. So it's maybe not exactly what you want, but you may not know exactly what you want until you're in the middle of it. Um, if you had to do it all over again, what would, what would you have changed? Oh. That's a good question. You know, I, I don't know that I would change anything. Um, I, one thing that I kind of skipped over earlier is my third summer between my junior and my senior year, I um, decided to take, take a step back and go work for a nonprofit and build um, uh, some porches and wheelchair ramps and things like that. Just because uh, just I wanted to make sure, honestly, that commercial construction was what I wanted to do. So I took a summer off from interning before I was hired on full time. Um, so I think that's one of the best decisions I made. Sometimes, you know, you, you wonder like if I had stayed there would, would it have been any different, but um, you know, I'm a, I, I don't know that I would, I don't know that I would change anything differently. That's a really good question. I'll think about it a little bit more as well and see, uh, see if I have anything that pops up. Ashley, you there again? You yeah, I'm question? here. Sorry, I had a little distraction. That's okay. Um, another question that I would have is what are some pros and cons about project management that you've seen from what position that you're in? Yeah, um, it can be a little bit of a stressful job. Um, I joke, my, fi my husband's a firefighter. Um, so I joke sometimes and say we're both firefighters, right? <laughs> um, the pros are, that no day is the same, nothing is the same. Um, so there can be an element of, of, I think with any job there, there's stress that comes along with it, but there's a lot of responsi responsibility. You know, I'm the project manager over an $88 million project and that school has to open up. Uh, we have to turn the school over um, in time for uh, everyone to move in and start school in August of 2022. And if we don't, 
that's not an option, right? So um, there's a little bit of element of stress, but I think I thrive on that too. Like I like the responsibility and the planning and coordination that goes along for that project. Um, so like I said, it's been about a year since we, we put a shovel in the ground, but before that I was working on this project for almost a year. So I've been working on this project for almost two years. By the end of it, it'll be a four year project for me, four and a half years. Um, now, not every project is that long, um, but it, I don't know, it, there's some sense of pride you get from taking an idea on paper, or I guess now it's 3D, right, on a computer, um, and building it out in the field and being able to go to touch that and say, like, I was part of that. Um, and so I think that's when, when I do get stressed out or um, don't enjoy a certain part of my job, then I just step back and think about that, because that's ultimately what um, is important. And, and like I said, I've been involved in a lot of healthcare projects and now education. So those buildings that you, know, you have your sweat, blood and tears poured into for months or years are going to impact the, the education of students um, or um, going to make people feel better, you know? Um, so th those, I think that's why I like education. That's why I like healthcare is because I know that um, what we're building is going to help the community. Um, and piggybacking off of one thing that you said about working a long time, about how many hours a week would you say that you're like clocked in and working? It's a good question. I actually had this conversation with um, one of the guys I work with the, the other day. It depends on where you're at in the project. It depends on how the project is going. Um, so honestly, I would say on average, probably somewhere between uh, 40 to 50 hours a week, typical. But there are some weeks that I spend 60, 70, 80 hours, uh, depending on where you're at in the project. And uh, there's been a big focus um, in the industry in general on work-life balance. And everyone keeps trying to talk about how you get the perfect piece of pie. Like this is what I spend for time, energy, and effort on my family. This is what I spend uh, for time, energy, and effort for my friends and think that it's this perfect little pie and everyone's going after that for work-life balance. For me, it's more of like an ebb and flow. So some seasons of my life, I'm working a little bit more and I have to focus on that. And there's some seasons of my life that I'm focused on my family more or myself more. And that to me is how you achieve work, work-life balance. And, and it's never going to be a perfect um, split of your time, energy, and effort. You just have to, you know, prioritize what you need to in that moment and, and you figure it out. Um, when you think about project management, whether it's residential, construction, across the board, um, what are some character traits that you see that make a good project manager? Good question too. Mike, did you, did you preview her questions before this? These are great. <laughs> um, you do not need to be the smartest person in the room. Um, I like to joke and say, uh, you're jack of all trades, but a master of none. Um, you need to be really organized and know what questions to ask. And it's a very much a relational business. Um, so the most successful project managers or even superintendents I've seen um, they value the relationships of their clients, so the owners. Uh, they value the relationships of the designers. Um, there's this stereotypical bad relationship between designers and, uh, and contractors. And for a while, I honestly thought that that's how you had to act in construction. Um, and so I actually thought that I was going to have to get out for a while. And then I realized quickly that um, as a project manager across the board, there's no two project managers the same. You don't manage the same way. You figure out what works for you and then you'll be successful. So for me, mine is relationships. My architect and I have a great relationship. My subcontractors and I have a great relationship. That involves hard conversations sometimes, but when you have that relationship and treat people with respect and realize that we're all human and that we're all here living a different life, not just, not just working, um, you'll be extremely successful. So relationships got to be really organized. Um, and, 
um, time management. So I get a little distracted sometimes. And sometimes that's, I am my own reason for having to work 60 hours a week because I can't get out of my own way. Um, so that, that's what I would say, no matter, no matter residential or commercial, it, it would be those, those traits. Um, so I know that's when your builder first gets the contract and you guys are the project managers. What do the first few steps look like when you're assigned onto the project? Yeah, so it's a little bit different. We didn't, I told you about two different roles, project management and super superintendent role. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a pre-construction role. So you if you've heard of estimating or estimators, um, a lot of times they'll start with the project. And depending on what your contract looks like, um, we may be involved when it's a napkin sketch, um, or we may get involved when it's a full set of drawings. Um, for this project in particular, I finished a project early and had a little bit of time. So I was involved early on looking at the napkin sketch and helping provide um, budget numbers and um, what we call scopes of work. So saying, uh, uh, my electrician, I need you to cover this, 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 and this. And then my uh, mechanical subcontractor, I need you to cover this, this, and this. And there's, um, it goes in into part of the contract. But um, with public work, it is it is publicly bid. And so you have to be, you have to make sure you have everything spelled out very clearly before we ever start this project of who is doing what. Um, and and so uh, most of the time project managers are handed it once you receive uh, the bids from from trade partners or subcontractors, and we take it from writing contracts on. Um, but sometimes it's a little unique and you finish up a project and you're involved early on. So it, it really depends. Um, but a lot of time, uh, project managers are responsible from writing contracts to the end of the job. Um, let's see. So this is pertaining to being a female. Um, what if what kind of challenges have you seen as being a female in a male dominated field? Um, this is one of my biggest concerns when I first decided to go into construction. Um, I and frankly, Ashley, I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it has been. And I do think um, I have worked under some very strong female project managers. Um, three I can think of in particular. Um, up to this point in my career, I've worked under all three of them. Um, and I feel like they probably had it a lot harder than I did, um, having to, to prove yourself, but honestly, um, I don't know that it's been that much harder than my male colleagues. Um, I do feel like I have to handle situations a little differently sometimes. Um, but again, I think that also comes with your style of management. And, and you figure out what works for you and you figure out what's successful and you figure out what is not successful. <laughs> um, and, and I would say it has not been as difficult as I thought it was going to be. As you get further into the field and as you start to get years behind your badge, have you been noticing more women coming into the field in any sort? Absolutely, yes. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's 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 the women that I worked under when I first started that kind of paved the way. Um, I don't know. So I worked for a woman-owned company, um, but in in reality, I don't know that my gender plays into my role nearly as much as you would think it does. Um, I'm either a good project manager or I'm not, um, and I think you go into into life or into your career knowing that like, I don't want to be the best female project manager. I want to be the best project manager that my superintendents have worked with, that my subcontractors or trade partners have worked with. Um, and, and that's my goal. Um, what kind of advice would you give to people that are in my position to looking into going to project management? Um, I know you said something about internships, but mm -hmm. after you get those internships, what kind of advice would you give and also for the future? Um, I, number one is either work experience or internships. Um, you'll get a, get a lot of respect and 
you, you figure out what you like and what you don't like. Because if I decided I didn't like construction, I would have figured it out. Even if I did all of my internships in construction those summers, I have invested very little time and energy in the scheme of life or a career um, in three summers deciding that I don't like something. Um, so that is always my biggest piece of advice is go get experienced, whether it's something that relates to what you're interested in or, or what you're actually interested in, paid or unpaid. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it, we're getting better. We're coming out of a little bit of a strange time, but when I was going into the industry, um, it was in 2008 and you were lucky to get a paid internship. Most people I knew were, were working for free just to get the, get the credit, um, and so I know that I was extremely blessed to have the opportunity, but, but any experience possible is good. Um, if there are any um, career or technical classes or clubs or going to shadow um, you know, someone in the industry, um, asking advice to someone kind of like you're doing now, um, all of that's really good advice. Um, but I would also just say, if you decide to go down a career path, put your head down, think about what you want and just work hard. Um, I can teach you almost any, how to do almost anything. I cannot teach you work ethic. And so you've got to work hard. You've got to show up and you've, you've got to be passionate. I cannot teach you those things. So you just need to, that, that is probably my biggest piece of advice. Once you get into the industry, or even when you're in your intern internships, because, um, employers are really kind of testing you out too, to see if you're going to be a good fit. So um, if you're going to go above and beyond or take on more stuff or be responsible and take pride in your work, we notice that. Um, and I would much rather hire you after taking, uh, uh, you know, test driving than just uh, looking at a sheet of paper and seeing if you're qualified, you know. Oh, and one more thing, relationships. I know I mentioned that earlier, but um, I have never once just applied for a job not once in my entire life. It, every single job or um, work opportunity I've gotten has been through someone I knew. Again, nine times out of 10, if you, you're, I have your resume and I have Mike's resume and I don't know, Mike, he might look better on paper than you, but you come with a recommendation from someone I trust, I'm gonna hire you. Uh, so those relationships with your teachers, your, your professors, your friends, parents, um, any opportunity like that, um, not just to get a leg up, but realizing people are people and keeping those relationships will get you extremely far, no matter what career you take. And how, um, how soon should someone start networking? Because I know networking is huge. Now. Um, you recommend like as soon as possible. Yeah. So when I said I've never gotten a job in my life, I mean, back when I was 13 years old and needed a, you know, a babysitting job. I mean, I know that sounds silly babysitting, but you, you get references from people that way. I, I was a lifeguard when I was in high school as well. Got that job just through people I knew. So, so start now. It's never too early. And I think that is all my questions for you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. They were great. Great questions. Those were great questions, huh? Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she did prepare those all for her, her uh, on her own and being able to ask those questions uh, about what she's curious about. So Carly, let me ask you a question now. Sure. And you, you brought up a lot of great stuff and really a lot of the stuff that you brought up uh, really coincides with the research and best practices. So at the Stanford Life Design Lab, which they have done for 15 years as an outgrowth out of their school of engineering, and they tell their kids, hey, we, we, you know, you're the best engineers in the world at Stanford, right? Uh, we teach you to design elegant solutions for SpaceX and Tesla and Apple, right, and Facebook. But really, you know, the most wicked problem that you all face in your life really gets to be designing your life. Because we know the data shows most Americans hate or dislike their job. Most Americans regret all the decisions they made about college. 
And so they're taking an engineering perspective and design thinking and said, said, hey, let's design like we do for SpaceX but in human-centered design, but let's design for your life. And it's a very intricate uh, pedagogical map that they say makes all the educators happy, right? Uh, because of the complexity. But they say, hey, it's only three things. And I uh, wanna see your take on this as you look at your life. Okay. And at the Stanford, they say for the rest of your life, in high school as teenagers in college, as teenagers and beyond, and the rest of your life, when you're looking, you have to do three things. You have to get curious and chase it. Mm -hmm. Two, you need to talk to people. And they mean talk to people who are involved with your area of curiosity, who are probably doing it professionally. Three, you need to try stuff. You should be trying stuff related to your area of curiosity. So they use very simplified language, get curious mm -hmm. and chase it, talk to people, try stuff. To say, but just to help folks understand and Ashley to understand and other ones. And it doesn't matter if you've got, um, you know, a, a, a crisis in middle age and you want to pivot and turn. Yeah, you, you know, to approach it like an engineer. Yeah. Three, these three things. And are you able to look at your life and relate it to chasing curiosity and talking to people and trying stuff? Absolutely. I feel like my, the story that I've told you guys, I'm not going to rehash it all, absolutely falls into that. It starts off with something I was interested in, right? So I took classes that I was interested in. Um, talking to people in the industry by, and I really, like I said, owe it a lot to the opportunities that I was given um, when I was in high school, but by having people who are in the industry work alongside of us for the Habitat House and then actually going and working with them too. So all of that absolutely leads to success and you're not, you're not spinning your wheels going down a path and then deciding you don't like it. So I absolutely would a thousand percent agree with that. Well, I appreciate that because that's uh, simply what we're trying to help kids and youth and be able to have that message go out that uh, to Ashley and other teenagers, hey, be doing these three things as teenagers and beyond. And even as you get older, because really there's probably no one best version of you, right? That it's okay to pivot and turn in, into a certain direction if it's leading you to happiness and fulfillment and hopefully prosperity too. Yeah. So I know we've taken up your time beyond what I think we said we would. And, um, but um, I wanna thank you for being our first official uh, career spotlight podcast. And, um, and Ashley brought this up, but uh, Carly was our first project manager that built our first Habitat house and Ashley uh, built our ninth one. So hopefully next year we're gonna get everybody together because it's a big year, we're gonna build our 10th. Yes, right? absolutely. That would be and, great. And uh, bring all of uh, the alumni back and see what we've been able to do and uh, share the, the impact of that. And I think the impact of that, though, too, is uh, of, of business and industry understanding that we're really dependent upon um, Carly talking to people right, and then providing the same opportunities that Carly got coming up, right, to try stuff, right, and have real world authentic things like yeah, you were able to do at Olympic High School in project and what we call experience project and experiential learning. So that's my little call to action for everybody who may be listening from the business community. We've got two great young ladies here with all uh, one is already doing it and one with a lot of promise. But it's the same recipe 
that we've been doing for a decade of providing these kinds of experiences and resources and access, you know, to people uh, at, who become their role models of, of where they're trying to go. So I want to thank everybody for being here today. Thanks so much. And um, thanks for doing our first um, podcast uh, spotlight here. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks for having